Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Christian Conti, otherwise known as Crispy Beats. Some of you guys may know me from my Instagram channel, which I'm starting to deviate away from. The reason for that is because of the one minute limit on video on Instagram, which is kind of starting to limit me for the videos I want to make. So I'm making this move towards YouTube. In this video series, I hope to explain the steps I make when I make a beat or any sort of music and show you guys exactly what I go through. Before I start, I want to say I don't consider myself an amazing beat maker. I'm not doing this because I think I'm a professional. I'm just simply doing this to document what I do and so that with each video, hopefully I'll be able to see some progress in my beat making techniques and my beats will start to begin to sound better. That being said, let's dive into the video and I'll show you what I did on my most recent beat, which is called Something. Those of you who follow me on my Instagram will know that I start most of my beats with a guitar chords or a guitar melody. That's simply because I'm a guitarist originally and have been for the past 12 years approximately. This beat is no different, so I started with these guitar chords. On that I added a reverb. You guys will notice that a lot of the effects and instruments I use are either default from Ableton or free. This is simply because I'd like to master the equipment I have before I start purchasing more equipment. I've only been making beats for around three months, so I'm not that experienced. Anyway, this is what the reverb that I put on looks like. I then added some vinyl distortion just to give the guitar a slight vintage vibe. I also increased the crackle volume and that gives it some pop, like as if you were listening to a vinyl. I EQ'd the guitar like this, so I almost always take out the low end, just so it doesn't mix with the bass and the kick. I took out 1K and 3K slightly for the two snares, which I'll get to later. I also added a triplet delay. This is very inspired by London C's song, Soulful. Go listen to that if you haven't checked it out. Then I took out the high end. Again, this gives it a very warm, jazzy, vintage vibe. Increased it on the stereo field. And finally, side chained it to the kicks. So it gives it a very lo-fi sound. After that, I started with the drums. So the hats I'm using are from Boom Bap Beat Pack. I can link that in the description. They sound like this. I didn't do much to the hats except for EQ'd it slightly. I took out some of the highs, again, just to give it that vintage vibe. Then I added a second hat which sounds more trappy, more modern, that sounds like this. To that I added a bit of reverb just to give it some space and some movement in the song, create some atmosphere. And then I added a snare which sounds like this. That's from the same pack as the first hi-hat, has a very real feel. And again, sounds pretty old, sounds pretty Jay Dilla stuff. I have a clap on top of that to give it a little bit more edge. Then for everybody's favorite part, the kick. I often keep my kicks very simple, just so it makes your head nod quite a lot when it hits. I quite like that style. You hear it a lot in like Tom Mish songs, for example, where the kick just maintains the same pattern. If you listen to his first beat tape, beat tape one, you'll get the kind of idea. I EQ'd it like this to take out some of the low end. That's to leave space for the bass, which I'll just get to now. I match my bass perfectly with the kick when it comes to boom bap sort of songs. Again, that's to make the sort of head nod so you feel the bass and the kick together. Kind of like disco tunes used to be back in the day. I sidechain that to the kick so that the kick breathes when the bass hits. And I also took out the very, very low ends on the bass just so I don't create too much rumble. I dropped it slightly on the 100 hertz to leave some space for the kick. And I added a saturator to make it sound more fat and a bit more distorted. Then I added this flute melody. That sound is a shaku haki, 
patch from Contact Star. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it sounds kind of like a flute. It's a world instrument, don't really know what country it's from, but it sounds a bit more woody. quite like this patch, I've used it quite a few times. On that, again, I put the same vinyl distortion that's on the guitar, added a bit of chorus to give a bit of movement and atmosphere. Sounds like it's kind of being played with a bit of vibrato as well. And I put some reverb on it, again, to create more atmosphere. Near the end of the song, just to build it up a bit more, I added a piano which plays one note, the root note, on the hi-hats. So that sounds like this. Again, that's an idea I got from Londesi. I heard him do that with his guitar multiple times on his tracks. And I just like the vibe, it gives it the groove, it kind of feels more like it's bouncing. On the master channel, I added Isotope Vinyl, of course. I use this plugin on almost every track I've made. I just put some dust effect and a slight bit of warp. I usually use it more, but I wanted to keep this track quite clean. So that's what it looks like. And for that, it's pretty much over, guys. I added some open hat, some perks, and a beat tag, of course. Not really much else to it. I tend to use a little amount of tracks and just try to get most sound from the tracks that I'm using. If you're not doing so already, follow me on Instagram. I post on Instagram two to three times a week. All my beats are on SoundCloud and I try to drop them all on YouTube as well. So you can listen to the full beat on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. Have a good day. Till next time.